So I would like to read in from a file instead of from the keyboard in C++. Um, the first thing I'm going to need to do is bring in a library called fstream, which is short for file stream. And that's going to let me direct input to come from a file. And the next thing I'm going to need to do is to create an object down here that's type ifstream, which is short for in file stream. Um, that's coming from the fstream library. And then I'm going to choose an identifier. Um, this is up to me what I name it. It has to follow the normal rules of naming. I like to name them in file so I remember what they are. And then I'm going to have to basically attach a file to it, which means I'm going to need a file. So I'm going to go over here to my resource files folder, and I'm going to add a new item to it. And it's going to be under utility, and it's just going to be a text file. Let's call this uh, input.txt. I'm going to add it over here, and then I've got to put some text in here. So this is my input test file. I hope it works. Okay, save that guy. Go back to the code. Now I have two options when I go to open this file. I can name it right here, and I just put in quotes the name of the, the file that I just created, and that will open it. Or I can wait and open it on the next line, and that would look like this, the name of my file stream object, .open, and then input.txt. So this creates the connection to my file. I haven't actually read anything yet. It just basically creates the bridge to this file that has some information in it. Next step I have to do is to make sure that that opens successfully. If I made a typo here, if I maybe put two T's or something, then that file wouldn't exist. Or if I tried to get to a file that wasn't in a location I expected to, or if I tried to get to a file that I don't have access permissions to, then my open would fail. And if I didn't open the file, then I can't successfully read from it. So my next step is to use this function called fail to see if the file opened or not. So if the previous operation on the file, which was to open it, fails, and this guy will give me a true, which means I should put out some kind of message. Your file didn't work. Okay. Otherwise, I'm okay to go ahead and start reading from the file. So there's a couple of ways to read, and basically I want to keep going until I hit the end of the file. Um, if I want to read word by word, then I can use extraction operators, just like I do with CN. If I want to read a line at a time, I can use get line, um, just like I do with other strings. So the first thing is I need a string to read into. Um, let's say I wanted to read from this file word by word and output each word on a new line. And I can write myself a little while loop that kind of looks like this. Instead of using CN, I use my file stream name. I'm still going to use my regular old operators. And they will use a space as a delimiter. I'm going to read into my string. And this guy is going to return true so long as this read was successful, which means it'll keep going so long as there's words left in the file. And it will fail finally and return false when it hits the end and there's no more words to read. And I can verify this by seeing out each word that I read. Okay, so let's play this guy and see if it works. Okay. Oh, your file didn't work. Press any key to continue. Keep typing that E into text. All right, so let's try again. So there are the words from my file. This is my input test file. I hope it works. Okay, so that'll read word by word. I also have the option of reading line by line, and all I need to do is use get line. So right here, switch this to a get line. Again, in file will go in the place of CN because I'm getting from the file instead of from the keyboard. Put a comma here, close that off. Now it's going to grab line by line from the file. Let's verify that. There we are. This is my input test file. I hope it works. Um, so this worked perfectly. Um, the computer's actually doing something automatically for me, which is to close the file. But really, if I was being uh, polite and following proper style and everything, I would close the file myself when I'm done with it. So when I'm done reading everything, I'm going to go ahead and say infile.closed. Um, that way I make sure this file connection is closed. This is really going to be particularly important if I wanted to now try to open another file with this same in-file object. I would actually have to close it and then do an extra step called clear to flush out the stream before I can make a new connection. If this is where your file use ends, however, you don't need this clear guy, but you should close it just to make sure you're finished. Okay. Um, now, what if my file isn't over here in my resource files folder, which means it's buried somewhere in my Visual Studio projects? What if it's on like my flash drive? So I've got a folder over here um, on my, my flash drive. If I make a text file in here, let's do that. 
text document. Let's call this flash drive. Okay, I'm going to go in here. This is the file flash drive. How do I read it? So I've got this here. Now, all I need to know to do to read a file that's not buried in my Visual Studio folder is I need the path of it. So I'm going to grab that from right here. And my flash drive is, is coming up as an E drive on this particular computer. So I'm going to go into where I specify what file to open. And I'm going to put here my path. And then I named my file flash drive. And then all I have to take care of are these backslashes, which if you remember are escape sequences, so I need to double them. And this should direct it to the file that's on my flash drive. Let's verify that that worked. This is the file on my flash drive. How do I read it? Excellent. So that works. So that is how you read from a file.